How are you guys doing? Today is Sunday, January 9th, 2022. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to do an individual profile on Marcus Peters. The elite corner for the Baltimore Ravens turns 29 today, and my intention with this episode is, of course, to point out his impact in the NFL and in college on a micro level and look at what he's been able to uh, do game in and game out and be able to stack up the stats that he does to compete in a league with the best football players out of a pool of what a hundred thousand maybe millions of football players and then of course i'm going to impact his 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 impact on a macro level take a take a zoom out and look at the individual accolades and achievements and accomplishments he's been able to amass while being an individual player and i think i I still think it's worth knowing how impressive it is to make yourself stand out as one of the best corners in football in a in a game of egos like the nfl especially when you're going up against hall of fame wide receivers day in and day out. If you're unfamiliar with Marcus Peters, he stands at about six foot, 197. I would say that the best way, he's just he's just a very uh, in-your-face type player. And of course, he's a very intelligent corner. Um, he knows what, I mean, he, I mean, he's been labeled as I mean, he's been labeled a bunch of different things in the past, but I think when it comes down to it, when he actually gets himself into the game, he puts himself into a focus. And Every once in a while, he can find himself outsmarting quarterbacks. And if he does that a good amount of times every game, that's a huge impact that, you had, that he has on his team season in, season out. So just to get into his background, he's originally uh, from Oakland, California. He would go on to play high school out in California, and he would go on to get recruited to play college ball um, at... Washington and he would go on to play under Steve Sarkeesian that was the coach that initially recruited him to play out there Marcus Peters his freshman season would go on to be a his it would it would be a season in which he would be redshirted so his actual fresh his freshman redshirt season would be um in 2012 which of course would go down as his age 19 season and in his age 19 season he would go on to play 13 games in a season where the Washington Huskies would end up going 7 and 6 they would go all the way to the Maco Bowl but they ended up losing to Boise State by 2 in that game but in that 13 game season Peters are going to finish with 44 tackles he even had a couple for loss he would finish with three interceptions as he would go on to return his lone collegiate pick six in his freshman year um and following that freshman year of course he would return to be a starter for washington in his redshirt sophomore year his redshirt sophomore season would be in 2013 and that would be his age 20 season and in his age 20 season with the huskies he would play 13 games in a season where they would finish with a nine and four record they would finish as the 25th ranked team in the nation as they went on to beat byu in the fight hunger bowl this would also be the season in which some um, Steve Sarkeesian would leave the program for greener pastures. But in Marcus Peters' redshirt sophomore season, he would play thir- in the 13 games he played. He finished with a career-high 55 tackles. He had three and a half tackles for a loss. He would have his lone sack in college that year. And he would also have a career high in interceptions as he had nine interceptions that year. He would recover both of the the fumbles he would recover in college in his sophomore year as well. And he would also force his lone fumble as even though as at the end of the year, Washington would finish with a ranked record. And Marcus Peters would go on to be named to the second team all pack 12, establishing himself as one of the better DBs in all of uh, at least uh, in, in the conference. But then following his redshirt sophomore season, he would come back for his redshirt junior season in 2014. In his age 21 year of football, he would go on to play eight games in a season where Washington would finish with an eight and six record. In Chris Peterson's first year coaching, they would end up losing in the Cactus Bowl to, to Oklahoma State at the end of the year. But of course, looking at how he would finish, he would fare with this, he would fare this season. He actually got suspended a game for a sideline tantrum and of course many when the people started giving started labeling him because of his uh quote-unquote behavioral issues but in the eight games he played he would finish by he would finish with 30 tackles on the year he finished with a career high four tackles for loss he would finish with three interceptions for the third year in a row in college which is very tough to do and now at the conclusion of the year like i said washington would go on to lose the cactus bowl and marcus peters would establish himself as a good enough prospect to be taken with the 18th overall pick in the two 2015 NFL draft. 
Um, he was actually the third cornerback taken in that draft. Trey Waynes was taken by the Minnesota Vikings out of Michigan State with the 11th pick, and then two picks ahead of Marcus Peters with the 16th pick, the Houston Texans selected Kevin Johnson out of Wake Forest. Looking at other elite players that were taken out of this draft, Amari Cooper was taken by the Raiders with the fourth overall pick. Uh, other notable names, Todd Gurley was taken with the 10th pick by the Rams out of Georgia. But like the, the, you, you get a sense for the players that he was coming out with in 2015. Um, he was drafted, of course, by the Kansas City Chiefs, the, the team that he would play with for his first couple seasons. In his first season in Kansas City in 2015, he would go on to start 16 games for a Kansas City Chiefs team that would finish with an 11-5 and record. They won two more games in the prior year. This is the year where Eric Berry won the comeback player of the year. And after an amazing fresh, or after an amazing rookie season, Marcus Peters would be named the defensive rookie of the year. He would go on to finish with 60 combined tackles, which is the most tackles that he's had in a season. He would finish with 26 passes defended, which, lead, which led the NFL. That's the only time in his NFL career he's led the NFL in passes defended. He would go on to finish with eight interceptions, which was a career high, and the lone time he's led the NFL in interceptions. He led the league in interception yards for the first time in his career, and he would finish with two pick sixes, which led football. That was to be the first time that he led the NFL in pick sixes as well. Um, at the conclusion of 2015, he, of course, would be named to the Pro Bowl. He was named to the second team All-Pro as a rookie and to be named all of this while being named the Defensive Rookie of the Year is of course a very big honor and not to mention that he was the Interceptions co-leader in 2015. Um, he went on to lead or he, hold, he held that title with Reggie Nelson of the Cincinnati Bengals. Once the season came to a close, he would compete with the Chiefs in the playoffs. In the first round, they would end up shutting the Texans out 30 to nothing before losing in the next round in the divisional round to the New England Patriots. This is the year where the Broncos would end up beating the Panthers in Super Bowl 50 for context. Following Marcus Peters' virtuoso rookie season, he would come back for a second season with the Chiefs. In his age 23 season in 2016, he would start all 15 of the games he played. In a season where the Chiefs finished with a 12 and two record this was the first out of six years in a row in which the kansas city chiefs have won the afc west in a row including this season um but he would go he wanted to, he would go on to help them win one more game than the previous year he finished with 45 tackles in the 15 games he played he would finish with uh or he finished with 20 passes defended that would be the second time in his career that he's defended at least 20 he actually has not done so since then he would finish with six interceptions the second most interceptions he'd finish with in his career and he would also go on to recover three fumbles as well at the end of the 2016 season he would go on to help the in addition to helping the chiefs make the playoffs he would be named to the Pro Bowl for the second year in a row as he was named to the NFL first team all pro for the very first time in his career. Just to give a sense of how well he was playing in his very first two years. And after being named to the first team all pro, being recognized as one of the two best corners in football in just his second year of football. And just after being named to the second team all pro, the Kansas City Chiefs would actually lose their first playoff game in the divisional round to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, in this playoffs, it would result in the Patriots beating the Atlanta Falcons in Super Bowl 51 in NRG Stadium in Houston. But transitioning into Marcus Peters' third season with Kansas City in his age 24 season in 2017, he would start all 14 of the games he played in a season where the Chiefs would go on to win the AFC West for the second year in a row. They finished with a 10-6 and six record, though. They had won two less games in the prior season, but of course, winning the AFC West is winning the AFC West. Peters would finish with 46 combined tackles on that season with one more tackle than the previous year. He would go on to finish with nine passes defended. He had five interceptions, making it the third year in a row. In his first five years, he finished with five interceptions. He would go on to lead the NFL in interception return yards as he would finish with 137 of them. Um, and then not to mention, he also forced three fumbles that would, at that point would be a career high. He would recover two fumbles and he also went on to rec he also picked up his lone fumble recovery touchdown in his career in his age 24 and 2017. 
He would not go on to make the Pro Bowl this season, but the Kansas City Chiefs would make the playoffs. And once they made the playoffs, they would actually lose in the first round to the Titans by one. And this was the year where the Eagles would go on to beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Following Peters' first three years in Kansas City, he would eventually get traded for a sixth round pick to the LA Rams. And once he was selected by the, or once he played for the LA Rams, he played about a season and a half. In his lone full season with the LA Rams in his age 25 season in 2018, Marcus Peters would start all 16 of the games he played in a season where the LA Rams would finish with a 13-3 and record. They would win the NFC West and they would win two more games than they had won the previous season. Their 13 wins were the most wins they had in a season since 1999. Peters doing his part on the defensive end. He would finish with 43 tackles on one side as he also had eight passes defended. He finished with three interceptions, which at that point was the lowest in his career. And even to this day is the least amount of interceptions he's had in a season. He would also go on to return a pick six, the third in his career. Um, Also looking at how 2018 would fare for him. The LA Rams would go on to make the playoffs they went all the way to the super bowl first they had to beat the falcons in the divisional round by eight they had they ended up beating the saints by a field goal in the nfc championship and then they ended up losing 13 to 3 to the super bowl that was played in atlanta and then for reference this was the year where aaron donald would go on to win his second defensive player of the year in a row just for context um, but following Marcus Peters' lone full season in L.A. with the Rams, he would start 2019 as age 26 season with the Rams before eventually getting traded to the Baltimore Ravens. Um, he would go on to play six games before he got traded in exchange for a linebacker, Kenny Young, and a fifth round pick. Um, but in the six games he played for the Rams, he would finish with 14 tackles, uh, two interceptions, and a pick six. He fin- by finishing the season with the with the Ravens he, in the t- ten games he played he finished with thirty nine tackles three interceptions he would lead the league in interception return yards by the way but he still had uh, two pick sixes with the Baltimore Ravens that season so looking at how his entire fifth year in the NFL combined and the 15 games he started in the 16 games he played he would finish with 53 total tackles which is the second most he's ever put up in a season he would also go on to finish with five interceptions which is tied for the third most he's ever put up in a season his 210 interception return yards are the second most he's ever put up in a season and they'd be the third time in the NFL he's led the league in interception yards the last time he's done so to date and he led the league in pick sixes that's his three interception returns are the most he's ever had in a season and that is the second time in his NFL career he's led the NFL in pick sixes at the end of 2019, Marcus Peters would be named to the Pro Bowl for the third time in a five-year stretch, and he would be named to the first team All-Pro for the second time in his career, making, making the first time that he made it not a fluke. Once he finished the season with the Baltimore Ravens, the Ravens would end up losing in the first round to the Titans. This was also the season where Lamar Jackson won the MVP, John Harbaugh won the Coach of the Year, and Greg Roman won the Assistant Coach of the Year. Um, but of course... Following that 2019 season, Marcus Peters would come back for the last full season that he's played. He would play all, he started all 14 of the games he played in 2020 with the Ravens in his age 27 season. The Ravens would finish with an 11 and 5 record as Marcus Peters finished with 52 tackles, the second most tackles he finished with in a season. He would also go on to finish with four interceptions. This would be yet, yet another season that he was able to do. He was able to finish with at least three, like finishing with at least four, and that's five of the six seasons he's played in the NFL is a very tough um, feat to do consistently. He would go on to force four fumbles, the most fumbles he's forced in his life or in a career, and he would also go on to recover two fumbles as well as he also recorded his very first sack in his first full season with Baltimore. As the 2020 season came to an end, he would not be named a Pro Bowler or to an all-NFL team, but he would help the Ravens make it past the Titans in the first round. They would beat the Titans by a touchdown the wild card round before losing in the second round to the Buffalo Bills by two touchdowns. 
And then, of course, this transitions us into this 2021 season, which he actually has not played a whiff of. This season, he tore his ACL right before the very first game, and he was placed on the injury reserve for the season. And even this season, the Baltimore Ravens have been suffering as a result of missing him, along with other players that have for like the entirety of the season. Right now, the Baltimore Ravens are still sitting with a possibility of entering the playoffs as they do have an eight and eight record. Um, but Marcus Peters isn't going to be a part of the reason they make the playoffs this year if they do. But I do know that when he comes back for this upcoming season, if he's fully healthy, he most definitely should be a menace on the line that wide receivers and quarterbacks should be looking out for. It's very rare that you see a player consistently average about at least four interceptions a game, and he is a player that really can do it all. It really shows that Marcus Peters is most definitely possibly on track for even a gold jacket, even looking at what his impact has done for his teams. But I can't wait to see what he does over the next few years, especially as he is turning 30 next year. With that said, I want to thank everyone for listening to all 15, 16 minutes of this piece. I want to thank the NFL and college, or I think the NFL.com website. I want to thank the pro and college reference, pro and college football reference websites for giving me all the facts and figures that I needed for this episode as well. And of course, if you ever get a chance to watch Marcus Peters, I would. He's wearing number 24 for the Baltimore Ravens. And um, once all of today's exhibitions and matchups are done, I am going to come back tomorrow on Monday, January 10th for another episode of The Elite. And until then, I want to thank everyone for listening. I hope all is well. And I'll catch you with another piece tomorrow and hopefully another piece on Marcus Peters this time next year. Um, Peace out. I'll catch you with more.